Welcome everybody. This is video two showing you how to get your MPVI2 to do standalone data logging. And what that'll enable you to do is not use the laptop. You just plug the device right into your OBD2 port, hit the button, and you're good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our uh, parameters. So you're going to open a log file that you've scanned with the vehicle already. And I'm going to actually take one that I did here. Uh, and there's no limit here. They, they've added a lot of storage. I saw another guy post a video talking about deleting all the files. You don't need to delete the files. Uh, it has like 8 gigs or 16 gigs and you'll see the the size of these. Uh, even some of the bigger ones are only 2 megs, uh, 3 megs. You know, not that big of a deal. So you got plenty of storage. So we'll open a recent log file and we have these parameters. This is the default parameters. This is what's going to record. So what you're going to want to do then is you're going to go to your vehicle. I have to actually close the log file. This was just to show you that what's on there. So we'll close the log file, go back to vehicle, MPVI2 data logging, it's always going to be at the bottom. And here's where our options are going to plug in, uh, show. It says device found, because I have it plugged in. You have your start and stop triggers, and I'm going to use the um, user initiated ones. And I didn't have any success with the sustained acceleration. So let's just zero those out. And we'll zero that out. Now, uh, once we've done that, we're gonna hit set triggers. And it says it's complete. Now here's where it gets tricky. Because here's all my log files. It's always gonna give the date of January 1, 1980. They haven't figured out a way to read the data on the OBD2 yet. Not a big deal if you're saving your files daily or weekly, you'll have a general idea. So you can see uh, in my log files, I'll show you on the days that I've saved it, that uh, even though they all said January 1st, 1980, you can see the dates here are right there. And let me do that again so you can actually see it. And you'll see the dates. So they're and I just made a little extra notes on there, just trying to say that because I'm working with HP tuners uh, on fine tuning this. But back to writing the triggers and files. So we're here, MPVI2 data logging. We've already written, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we need to write the channels. So you can read the channel config and it's gonna confirm that's default. I have some other ones on there. And we'll hit write configs, they're written. We have the start, top, start, stop triggers, which we've already set. So now what you need to do is right here, resync interface resources. Um, you also can go up here to resync interface, but I want you to do this because uh, you'll see it's like an eight step process. And this one's actually gonna write to the device as well as resync it. There it goes, writing file one of eight, three of eight, five of eight and it'll be done here in just a second. My device is flashing, it's writing to it, and it should be done seven and eight, so it's complete. So now I can unplug my device, plug it into my car, wait about two minutes from the time I unplug it to the laptop, there's about a two minute delay, and then plug it into the vehicle and start getting good data. And that's it, that's video two. Video three is going to cover more of the troubleshooting side of the aspects I've had, as well as the one touch button not working. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe.